Okay, I think I'll get started. Um, good afternoon. My name is Lauren Cooper. I lead the Forest Carbon and Climate Program, and I apologize. I have a bit of a scratchy voice this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I'm really delighted to be sharing some uh, information about our new professional mini course called Forest Certification and Climate Change. Um, today, we will cover um, the details of the short course um, and uh, provide a little background on the Forest Carbon and Climate Program and also give you a little sneak peek on the course content. Um, for a few technical details, this information session is being recorded and it will be available on the FCCP website. So if you uh, would like to share this with anybody or review any of this later, um, it will be available and we'll also post the slides um, in a PDF format that you can download if you have anything you'd like to reference. Um, if you're experiencing any technical issues, please send us an email at forestc at msu.edu um, and we will respond promptly. So we're, we're monitoring that right now. So feel free to reach out if you have any um, questions there. Um, <clears throat> but you can also communicate with us through the Zoom um, chat interface. So there's a, um, a Q&A button at the bottom and as well as a, a chat um, button here. Um, we will monitor both of these and we'll have a little Q&A session um, at the end. Unfortunately, with my, I'm remote right now, so with my current setup, I, I can't see them while I'm sharing my presentation. Um, so we'll circle around when I'm done sharing the presentation and answer all of your questions. Um, and in the case that we don't answer them all, which I, I think we should be able to here, or if we cannot answer the questions for some reason, um, we will post, um, regardless, we'll collect all the questions and post all the answers, including anything that we might have to dig around a little further on, and post that as a, a PDF on our website along with the recording. Uh, so here's just a quick agenda for today. We don't think this will be very long, but we do want to give you a brief introduction on the Forest Carbon and Climate Program, um, give you a, a quick introduction to the short course itself, um, show you what the online learning environment looks like, particularly if you haven't experienced online learning yet, um, and then give you a little content preview to give you a sense of, of some of the, the content, um, and then some details on registration and enrollment. Um, so if you're not familiar with our program, we um, initiated our major activities in carbon and climate back in 2012 um, with the start of our graduate certificate in forest carbon science policy and management. Um, official activities of the forest carbon and climate program started in about 2014. Uh, and the, we've really operated in an online um, environment. Uh, and that's been, that's been purposeful. Uh, we're really excited and, and um, proud of our ability to meet a wide range of stakeholders and, and actors uh, where, where they're located. So we have global participation, we have rural participation, we have folks from all over the United States and Canada. Um, so we've been really de delighted to develop this network of engaged and interested professionals. And we have a lot of, um, uh, our programming is constantly updated and we have a lot of components of participant feedback um, in our program development. So it's built into our programming um, to have assessment and opportunities to collect feedback and it's, it's really crucial to continually improve what we're doing here. Um, here's just a visualization of our, of our program, um, some of the topics that we, we cover. We see ourselves as a really highly interdisciplinary program that um, is kind of inherent with these carbon and climate topics. We cut across a lot of, um, a, a wide range of topics that are in forestry and, and even sometimes beyond um, on the wood utilization side of things. Uh, and through our analysis and interpretation, um, we have a range of outputs, including learning materials. Um, this short course is a perfect example. Uh, we're engaged in professional meetings. We have scientific uh, writing and, and non-peer-reviewed writing, and we are involved in um, various research and project-based activities as well. Um, so here's just a snapshot of our activities. We do have formal education through MSU, uh, through the graduate school, non-formal education like this program, uh, research and projects, and a lot of stakeholder engagement, including our, our monthly webinar series, if you're not familiar with that, um, and, and other types of um, training and, and educational outreach. Um, so for a little bit more on the background, our goal is to boost capacity for natural resource professionals, but also those in NGOs, government agencies, consultants, um, some that may not identify necessarily as a natural resource professional. Um, so our content that we put out is really intended to be interdisciplinary 
because the nature of the topics we cover are very interdisciplinary. So our goal is to build a shared language um, on these topics and reduce some of the uncertainty or apprehension about embracing um, thinking about forests and forest materials in, through a carbon and climate lens. Um, through our training, we also aim to provide a competitive edge for those that are um, engaging professionally in this space, um, including those that are in um, carbon project development, um, forest certification, policy making, um, involved in offsets. And again, we have this really interdisciplinary focus. So we want to bridge silos um, and advanced solution based planning and our content um, is designed in such a way that folks from a wide range of backgrounds can jump right in and get comfortable with some of the new um, ideas and, and new terminology that goes along with this space. Um, so here's a flyer that might be familiar to you. Um, the start dates are unfortunately updated on this flyer. We're, we're talking about the upcoming March session. Um, we did have a trial run last fall for folks within the state of Michigan. So that's why we have these um, other dates on here. Um, but here's a flyer that's introducing the, um, uh, the key learning objectives, which I'll go over in a little more detail, and also the three sections of the course. So we call this a mini course. It has, um, which I think you can see my, my pointer down here, has three modules. Um, it has a conceptual introduction and overview, physical science of forests and climate, and then forest certification and climate change, which is the core unique uh, module um, in, this, in this offering. Um, and so for some background, this mini course was, was, is offered um, with support from SFI as part of a collaborative research project to identify connections between forest certification and climate change mitigation and adaptation. So the main goal of this effort was to identify shared language, shared concepts between uh, sustainability practices, whether they're BM, best management practices, BMPs, or forest certification, and draw tighter linkages to the world of climate smart forestry. Um, and so that's, that's really the goal of, of the, the module, is to um, help to conceptually bridge what those connections are. And I'll look, a little, I'll look at this a little closer. So here are the overall course objectives. Uh, we hope participants at the end of the course will be able to speak fluently and confidently about main concepts, science, and rationale behind carbon considerations in forest management. We hope they have a heightened awareness of key issues when managing forest carbon stocks and some of the ways to address them. We hope that they have an ability to incorporate climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies and forest certification standards and an increased capacity to assess climate benefits of forests of certified sustainable harvested uh, products and chain of custody tracking. So actually stepping outside of the forest right there. Uh, and here's um, kind of a high level overview of, the, um, of this module. And so we posed the question with SFI, does the idea of forest certification equal climate smart forestry? And climate smart forestry and climate smart agriculture are kind of buzzy terms that are used a lot in the international space and they have certain tenets um, about mitigation and adaptation. But we wondered, does forest certification actually encompass all or many of those, of those values and those, and those core principles? Um, and so we took a kind of qualitative approach to looking through the, the standards themselves within um, the certification standards. Uh, and as well as some project examples, and we undertook some interviews to, to see where are there trends um, in, in these connections between this kind of known emerging language of, of quote unquote climate smart forestry. And we found there was kind of three major categories that we break down in, in some detail in the course, or quite a lot of detail. Category one is, are these core carbon and climate concepts. So there are these fundamental concepts including climate change, mitigation, carbon, and adaptation. And we identified where these are in the, uh, in the certifying um, uh, standards. Um, category two links to the management and carbon storage. So the core considerations for managing, measuring, protecting, and planning for carbon storage in forested landscapes. And category three are the best practices with climate benefits. So it's, it's the step away, it's the broader, the step, the broader practices that provide link to or allow for climate benefits. Um, so those are examples could be watershed management and, um, and biodiversity. Uh, 
And, um, and so here I'll transition. I'm going to go back in a moment into some more details about the course. Um, actually, I can see some of these. Um, and sorry, I've seen some of these questions coming in, so I, I will respond to these in a moment. Um, I'm just pleased I can see them. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to. Um, and so for this, um, for, for this section, I'm going to introduce you to the online learning environment. So um, in, in case this is new to you, we'd like to um, uh, warm you up to the um, idea and the interface of, of operating in an online space. Um, we use an, a platform called D2L, which stands for Desire to Learn. They also use Brightspace sometimes. I'm not sure um, which one is the one where we still, our web, our, you'll still see D2L on the, the web link um, to access this. So uh, we use Desire to Learn. It's a password protected login and the courses will appear in this space. Um, here's an example of what the course would look like um, once you're registered and it'll show up in your online learning space. Um, here's what, again, the course format. We have these three modules. Each section has a presentation, a handout, um, terms and definitions, and suggested further reading. They are interlocked, so a completion of one section unlocks the next section. And I will answer a question right here that I can see from um, Daniel. Um, he says, uh, asked if we, when we're referring to the standards, if we're including um, FSC as well as SFI, uh, we have our, our initial analysis was across the various SFI standards, so chain of custody um, and the management um, standards. We are looking to uh, advance this work. So we've already started incorporating some FSC examples um, and we're continuing um, to complete some um, further interviews with FSC to get um, to get some more qualitative data um, as we're advancing in this work. But thank you for your question. There are more of the examples um, in the course will refer to SFI, but there are FSC examples as well. Um, and then we have a question about faculty involved in this course, and we can post um, links to folks um, in the PDF. We, it's largely um, Dr. David Rostein, um, who is, um, was central and instrumental in the background um, uh, of the forest carbon science module. Um, Dr. Dave McFarlane and, and then myself, Lauren Cooper, um, have been probably most heavily involved. We also, I also work closely with George Berghorn, who is an adjunct faculty member in building and construction, who is an expert in, in harvested wood products and wood utilization. So he has also um, contributed to the course. But thank you for that question. Uh, and then here's just another example of what the um, interface looks like. So there's um, links, that will be the, the major modules with um, links once you've entered that, that module that will have terms, um, additional external links to suggested readings, um, as well as links to the presentations, which is here. So the course um, delivery is largely through these presentations. They're designed to be highly interactive. Um, you, you have control here as far as clicking through sections. Um, there's a, a number of external links for optional external links right in the uh, embedded in the presentations for, for further reading if desired. Um, and there's also built in quizzes into the, into, the, into the presentation. So it'll stop you, check your knowledge, um, and I don't think I have an image of that, but if you, um, and they're not designed to be overly tricky, they're just designed to um, act as an assessment to make sure that the um, core concepts are being picked up um, before moving on to the next section. Um, here's some details on technical requirements. These are um, pretty average to get on computers nowadays, but sometimes people have an issue and their flash player is not updated. Um, one of the key issues, though, that we, that we do have sometimes is um, that the course does require streaming capabilities for presentations. Um, this tends to not be a problem in the United States and Canada. We do have some issues sometimes in international um, examples or folks from international um, places or other countries. Um, but I don't anticipate that being a, a problem largely for, for the audience um, that's in North America or Canada. There's full, further technical requirements, but generally speaking, if you have solid internet, um, you're not going to have an issue um, other than maybe updating um, something. And then here's kind of a sneak peek on some content to give you a sense. 
module one, we introduce, introduce some of the core fundamental concepts. We introduce um, more about the, the method and how we're linking these kind of climate smart forestry concepts um, to what we see as, uh, which is under certification, but also linked to best management practices. So some of the more, um, some of the ways that people are, have been thinking about sustainability and sustainable land management for a longer time. So we're kind of trying to build that foundation and, and build off of uh, where people are already comfortable with these, with these concepts, for example, with best management practices. Um, and again, this is that kind of concept that's introduced there. So this category, this kind of um, categorical approach and with very specific examples from real life and then where, does, where do these turn up um, in the standards. For, science, for module two, we do the um, get into the physical science. Um, and here we have um, interactive graphics breaking down um, the, the kind of core rationale and the reasons why we are talking about forests and trees in terms of climate change. Um, and here to the right, we have an example of one of the handouts, downloadable PDFs that um, come out of one of the, the presentations or one of the modules. So we have a downloadable PDF for each of the, the presentations. And these, um, what we can see here with the graphic, this is actually um, pretty animated. So there's a lot of movement um, and visual interest when you're um, participating in the online learning. Um, and here's an example of mitigation and adaptation. So this is, um, so we're kind of now in this module two, just going back to this. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, this would be in the module three. So, um, oh no, sorry. So yeah, this is kind of these kind of core principles, the, phys the physical science principles um, of the mitigation and adaptation. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, this would be in this module three. So once we're in module three, we start bringing in these concepts of the certification um, and how does this link with existing um, practices um, that are now getting tightly linked to this idea of climate smart forestry. So here we have an example, improved forest management is a, um, one of the core um, types of forest carbon projects. So along with afforestation and afforestation and avoided forest loss, the other major type of forest carbon project is improved forest management. Um, and so this is an example of um, something that is very common in forest carbon projects, uh, but these projects are required to be certified sustainable. So there's these inherent linkages that, that um, just maybe are not, uh, have not yet been pulled out to discuss in uh, the framework of, of certification explicitly. And then here is the bringing in these core concepts of mitigation and adaptation. And what we do is we highlight um, some of these core principles that harvested wood is, um, has received a lot of attention for being part of a climate solution, but it only provides that value if it's sustainable. I mean, we all know about the challenges in international contexts in developing countries. Um, and so certification can be a path to ensure that sustainability and management procurement and even to secure those climate benefits. Um, and so we, we have these kinds of, um, you know, these are kind of becoming known examples within the literature and the science of this space. Um, and then here's a, a really specific example from one of the SFI um, gu uh, guiding standards is their, their core principles, which highlights the role of forest productivity and health. Um, and then linking that could be linked to adaptation here. Um, to protect forests from economically or environmentally undesirable levels of wildfire, pests, and disease, et cetera, and, and maintain long-term health of the forest. This can also be viewed explicitly through a lens of climate adaptation. And with this idea that resilient, healthy forests is climate adaptation, it's fundamentally what it is. Um, and especially if we have uncertainty and changing conditions going forward, these resilient, healthy forests are our best bet to not lose carbon um, over time. So these are the ways that we're trying to very explicitly link some of these principles that are very comfortable outside or in this kind of climate smart forestry space or those that work in, in carbon and climate topics, but maybe haven't made their way all the way into um, forestry industry communities. Um, and we're aiming to, to help reduce the, some of the barriers or, or even present some of these ideas for the first time. Um, and then just some details on registration and enrollment. Let me see if there, um, quick question here. Somebody asked us if it's only possible to take module three at this point. Unfortunately, we don't offer, we don't have it set up like that. But Erin, um, if you wanna email me, um, 
could think about how to offer that, but they, yeah, but yeah, it's correct that the three modules do build on, on one another. Um, and so it probably is best to consider taking them in order because the concepts are, was kind of, were kind of designed to be interlinked. But I'm happy to chat with you offline about that as well. Um, so just some details now on the registration and enrollment um, and what this looks like. Um, you can enroll by um, accessing our storefront through the forestry department. We um, are currently creating a video to make this process as easy as possible to you know, receive a number of emails from different MSU related email addresses confirming different um, different steps. Um, and you receive a community ID that's created um, it's with our online education spe specialist and it's created with the email that you sign up with. Um, so that your that email will still be connected. So if you use your professional work account or your Gmail account, that's where you will continue to get some correspondences through. So it can be important to keep that in mind up front. Where, where do you want to get emails? Um, and then you can log in. Once you have your community ID, you'll log in um, to D2L and um, you'll receive notice um, when the course will open and when it will be visible to you. Here's an example of the storefront, what this looks like. We have a number of course offerings on here. And again, um, to take this course, you'll be looking for the forest certification and climate change course. Course fees, um, it's $250 for this course. For returning participants, anyone who's taken a course with the FCCP, we, it's always 25% off for additional um, programming. Um, and we also wanted to highlight here that we've worked with the state of Michigan, um, the SFI Implementation Committee, um, and we'd be happy to work up for reducing pricing for um, folks from the state of Michigan. Um, so we'd be happy to work with any other states if you, if you wanted to um, incentivize uh, participation in this course to fulfill continuing education requirements. We'd be um, happy to, to um, talk with you about, about doing that in your state. Um, upon the short course completion, um, you'll get a certificate of completion. Oh, and I do have a question here about group pricing, um, and I'm happy to um, look into that. We do offer different types of group pricing. Um, so depending on if you're an NGO or a company, um, we would have slightly different, um, or you know, nonprofit or a for-profit institution, we have slightly different guidelines about that, but I'm happy to explore those options with you. Um, so please reach out because that has been something that's worked. We've had some state teams come through. And then again, I just mentioned um, some support from that came, that was um, provided through uh, the SFI Michigan Implementation Committee, which could also count as a group as well. Um, and again, once you're, once you're looped into the FCCP, we offer 25% off any future courses. So this could also be a strategic way to go because this is one of our, this is our less expensive course. Um, and if you wanted to advance into our Understanding Forest Carbon Management course, you would be able to um, uh, get, uh, have discounted pricing there. And you will receive an official um, certified um, certificate of completion um, when you are done as well. And I will talk about continuing education credits in just a moment here. Um, oh, and I just got a um, question about the total time commitment. So this is a great question. I, sorry if I didn't mention, <laughs> get to this earlier on. I think I was supposed to mention this when the um, announcement slide was up. We expect this will take about two to three weeks to complete. And I don't have the current estimate of the hours I, in front of me. We've already done this for the state of Michigan. Um, but it's usually we plan, if we say something takes two to three weeks, we expect it to be like maybe two hours for each of those weeks. Um, so we're, it's not expected, it's, it's designed for professionals, it's designed to be something that you can, um, you know, knock out, um, but we still, um, you know, hope to get your undivided attention while you're participating, but then there's some optional readings, and so if you have specific areas that you want to do deeper dives on, we make those available to you, but to get through the core, core content, it's about, um, it would be probably about like two to three hours, and we estimate in this case per week, and this course we estimate is about two to three weeks. Um, and so to just talk briefly here about some of the other continuing education credits, um, we are going through a process of being formally verified um, or, or with SFI. So we have been approved in the state of Michigan and we just wanted to, before we put a, a number out here, we wanted to double check with SFI, um, but we have been approved at the state level. Um, and uh, so we will have um, kind of more firm information on that hopefully within a day or, or, day or two here. Um, and again, if you are um, 
an, a part of an implementation committee. Um, we will need, we're still setting this up, but we've already done this with the state of Michigan, but we'll need to know if your state is approving these credits because we'll probably get questions about it. Um, and we want to make the process as um, easy as possible for you. So we will handle tracking and reporting to back to the state ICs. Um, so please reach out to us. Let us know if this is something that you would like to approve or if you have any further questions, um, but that we would, again, we would track participants from your state and um, report out um, it probably within a, a couple of weeks after the, co uh, the course close date for each se session. And we offer this three times a year. Um, and we are um, pursuing other types of, of credits. So um, for S SAF, we have 5.5 uh, category one hours for this course. And we're also um, looking at ISA credits as well. So we will um, uh, have more information on that soon. And I'm available now for any further questions. Here's our contact information. Um, again, foresty at msu.edu if you have any further questions. Um, if you're an individual taking this, please let us know um, if, you have, if you have any specifics um, that you'd like to know about. I do have some questions coming in here. So, okay, so I guess one of the questions that's come in here, what are the key differences between this course and the other professional development courses? Um, so we're, you know, we're trying to be strategic about the new content that we're rolling out. So this one, the introduction module and then the module three is what's unique in this course. And that's why we want to offer a discount if anyone taking our other course because the background science module is going to be largely the same um, and we also want to know if you've taken one of the other courses because we could also change your access um, so that you don't have to go through the entire second module if you've already taken one of our other courses so the key difference is the very the completely new content is the module three which is the core of this course which is the linkages between certification and climate change um, and um, and then the introduction. So the way we're framing it um, is quite different. Um, but I'm happy to talk to you more about that, depending on what other what other offerings you've been involved in. And another course here we have um, or another question here is: um, uh, Is this course appropriate for me, even though I don't have a strong academic background in science? Um, I would say strongly yes. So this course. Um, is again, it's a great refresher for those of us that have had more advanced science training. Um, for even those that have had science training, not all of us have had um, a, a nice breakdown on the forest carbon science. So there's always something new to pick up there. Um, but if you haven't, it's designed in a way to be really accessible. I mean, we've designed this so that anybody from a policymaker to an uh, urban planner could be involved in, and walk away and have a good sense of, um, of the, uh, and being able to, to talk about this, a good sense of what the science, the rationale, what are the interventions. Um, so there's, for those of us that, that really love the science, there might be some really specific um, areas that you do deeper dives on or that you um, walk away with. For those that have less of a background, you're gonna definitely walk away with the core concepts, the big picture, um, and be comfortable in engaging in this forest carbon um, space and climate space. Um, the open window for taking this course. So um, let me go back here. Oh, I don't forget, we don't have this updated. So. We, because it really only takes two to three weeks to complete, we keep it open for, I believe we have this open for three months. Um, and I might be mixing this up with our longer running course, but I believe it's three months. So really, and it's completely go at your own pace. So technically the course opens um, here in the first a couple of weeks of March, but you are welcome to jump in. You know, you could jump in the middle of April and have plenty of time to, to complete it. Um, and technically, since we're really only talking about a couple uh, of, uh, of few hour chunks, um, if you're motivated, you could probably knock this out in, in a week. So, it, you know, we want to, you know, you're all professionals. And so we want to be able to give all that um, flexibility for, um, for you to know how you'd like to use your time. And um, so my program coordinator just confirmed it is three months that it's open. So technically we open in a couple of weeks here, but we have a lot of time to get, to get folks in and, and get folks through. The close date will technically be June 9th. So if you're signed up, we'll start bothering you to wrap it up <laughs> pretty heavily by the end of May. Um, but um, so if you don't wanna get a bunch of emails pushing you along, then um, maybe target being done by the end of May. <laughs> 
see if there's any other questions. I think I have one coming in here. Yes, so I did just answer your question, Ben. The course does time out and we do this for a reason um, because getting feedback and, um, and hearing about people's experiences is really important to us. We like to officially close the course and refresh it. Um, so we kind of, uh, we, you know, there's a lot of external links and we don't want to have dead links. So we like to go in there and make sure everything's working properly. Um, in some cases, bring in some feedback. We've gotten really great suggestions from participants and other courses that we take really seriously. So sometimes we have to add a slide here or there um, or add a couple of bullets. So we do like to officially, we would close this course June 9th um, and then there'd be a, la a, a lag before the next session starts again. Well, it doesn't look like I have any more questions right now, but please know that we are definitely standing by. Um, we'd really like to, uh, you know, we'd really, we'd really like to engage with the SFI community, and we're really excited about the linkages that we have here between certification and um, this broader umbrella of climate. And there's some really important connections here. So we're hoping to support um, SFI's goals and and FSC goals as well in. Um, in uh, supporting sustainable forestry. Um, and there's these clear linkages to carbon and climate and that's what we focused on here. So if you have any further questions, please again, reach out to forestc at msu.edu. Um, and um, we hope to advance this conversation and see you some of, some of you and some of your colleagues in the classroom. So thank you so much. Um, have a great rest of your afternoon.